Good morning, everyone. My name is Bin Jian, and I'm from National Research Council of Canada. Today, I will talk about something about the evaluation of the black body radiation shift uncertainty of our NRC's uh, strontium ion clock. So, first, I'll give a short introduction of our NRC's strontium ion clock. So, NRC's strontium ion clock is based on the optic. Um, the electrical quadrupole transition uh, from this S ground state to the D excited state. So the single ion, strontium ion is trapped in this under cap tap uh, uh, ion trap as is shown in this image. So this, uh, this clock transition is, uh, uh, has the wavelength of 674 nanometers and has a natural line width of 0.4 hertz. This is very suitable to be used as the optical frequency stand. And uh, uh, this transition is uh, probed using a very ultra stable laser. Uh, besides this uh, clock, uh, clock laser, there's a bunch of, there are some other lasers like uh, to, for the laser cooling state preparation and optical pumping purpose. Uh, so over many years hard work, so the current status of NRC is strontium ion clock in terms of accuracy has reached uh, 1.2 10 to minus 17, 10 to minus 17 level. Uh, the largest contribution to this uncertainty comes from the black body radiation field. Uh, the other major uncertainty source for this strontium ion clock uh, has reached the low 10 to minus 18 level. So in this talk, I will talk about something we did on the evaluation of this black body radiation field trying to see if there's any ways to bring down this uncertainty to the same level as the others. Um, hope by doing so, hopefully by doing so, we can just reduce the overall uncertainty of uh, strontium ion clock to the low part, to the low 10 to minus 18 level. So let's take a look of the black body radiation shift of, 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 the, uh, of the ion clock. So um, the black body radiation shift comes from the interaction of the atomic dipole moment and the electrical field of the black body radiation. Uh, so there are this this uh, black body radiation shift can be expressed using this equation. So besides a bunch of physical constants, there are three quantities we have to study carefully. The first one is the is the black body radiation field, and the second one is delta alpha naught, which is the differential st uh, static polarizability between the ground and excited state. Um, this, this value has been measured uh, about a couple of years ago, so uh, it has been measured very accurately. The third one is a temperature dependent dynamic correction to this uh, differential scalar polarizability. And this one can be calculated uh, theoretically very accurate. So the uncertainty contributions from the differential scalar polarizability and uh, its uh, dynamical corrections it are under 10 to minus 18, and so further investigation is not needed at this moment. Um, but the uncertainty contribution from this uh, black body radiation field is 7.4 times 10 to minus 18 per Kelvin at a temperature of 300 Kelvin. So if we want to bring down this uncertainty to the low, to the low 10 to minus 18, we have to, which means we have to evaluate the temperature or measure the temperature to the accuracy of a small fraction of one Kelvin. This basically is what we do in this work. So let's take a look of the NRC's ion clock trap, uh, the ion trap. So this is a three-dimensional model of NRC's strontium ion trap uh, cutting through its symmetrical plane. So uh, this is the end cap style ion trap. Uh, we have the end cap electrodes, and uh, we have the shield electrodes surrounding the end cap electrodes, and uh, in the B10, uh, some alumina ceramic spacers. So there are two very important uh, heating effects of the ion trap. The first one is the RF absorption of this uh, ceramic uh, dielectric materials. Uh, this is very important uh, since, you know, if this, uh, because this uh, ceramic uh, tube it's, a ver it's in contact with the end cap electrodes. So any heating generated by this absorption could heat up the end cap electrodes. Um, the second one is the dual heating of the conductors, you, which such as the end cap electrodes and the shield electrodes. So if the temperature of the end cap electrodes changes 
because this end cap electrode is very close to the ion. So this definitely will change the term, ex the environment and temperature experienced by the ion. So this, you know, in turn will shift uh, the optical frequency accordingly. So to evaluate the temperature or measure the temperature, you may think we can put the thermistor in the between of these two end cap electrodes and uh, just measure the resistance change of the thermistor as the temperature changes. However, this doesn't work accurately. The reason is this RF applied to for the ion, for the ion trap will heat up this thermistor. So this won't give you a very accurate measurement. Uh, so we have to use some other way to do the temperature measurement. So one way we think to do it is use the thermal graphic way, which is to use the infrared camera to measure the thermal image of the ion trap under the normal operation of the trap. And by analyzing this uh, thermal image of the trap, we hope, hopefully we can extract the useful, reliable temperature of the trap component. So this is the principle of this uh, thermal graphic temperature measurement. If we have the infrared camera here, so basically the, the camera detects the, the radiation emitted by the object uh, at the temperature like T, and uh, also the radiation reflected by the object from the ambient environment, as well as the radiation from this uh, atmosphere around this uh, setup. Um, so the temperature, the radiation emitted by the object can be related to the radiation by the, from the perfect black body at the same temperature through the quantity called the emissivity. So the emissivity is actually the radiation, is the ratio uh, of the radiation emitted by the object over the radiation emitted by the perfect black body at the same temperature. So emissivity has a value from zero to one so the perfect black body has emissivity of one. So um, after some simple mathematical operation, we have, so this camera could tell us the, per the radiation from the perfect black body at the same temperature of the object uh, related to the term to the total emissivity detected by the infrared camera. So by uh, match this, the, in the radiation of the perfect black body to the integration of the Planck's law over the spectral range of this infrared camera, we can extract the temperature uh, of the object we want to measure. Um, there is a, another very useful or very important information we can read from this equation is the larger the emissivity, the more accurate the temperature measurement. However, if we take a look at our ion trap, Ion trap is built from a lot of components which uh, has very low emissivity value. This definitely is not, a, is not good for temperature measurement. For example, these end cap electrodes um, are made from the molybdenum. So it's here at a very small uh, emissivity value, like 0 0.07 to 0 0.17. This, even this emissivity is not, an IQ, um, it's not a certain value here. So we, what we did is we, we painted the, this metal part uh, using the matte black paint, which has a pretty large uh, emissivity value. So by doing so, hopefully, we can improve the measurement of the temperature dramatically. There is another issue here is called the effective temperature experienced by the ion. So if we use the, this uh, thermographic method to do the temperature, the only temperature we can measure is the temperature of the ion trap components. But what we really want to know is this the effective temperature uh, experienced by the ion, which is trapped in the between of these two end cap electrodes, and is not physically in contact with any compo trap components. So at this moment, we need to do some theoretical simulation and this actually, this work has been done by the people in the Czech Institute of Metrology. And uh, we approached to them and they agreed to help us on this point. So the idea is we, we were modeling the ion trap, the heat, the thermal effect of our ion uh, trap components using the finite, uh, finite element simulation. 
by adjusting the simulation parameters like uh, the emissivity and thermal conductivity of the trap components, uh, hopefully we, we want to achieve the agreement of the simulation with the temperature measurement within 10%. After we achieve this, so the effective temperature change experienced by the oil can be, can be extracted from the modeling. So uh, here is the example of NR NPLs and the cap electrodes. This is the simulation result. So as you can see, the effect of temperature change experienced by the ion is 0.8 Kelvin with an uncertainty of 0.4 Kelvin. This uncertainty actually is very important. It's really something what we want to know, which determines the uncertainty. So this 0.4 Kelvin corresponding to the fraction of frequency uncertainty of 3 times 10 to minus 18. This is also the goal we want to achieve in our experiment. So basically, in our lab, what we can do is to do the measurement of the trap, com the measurement of the trap components temperature to a very accurate level. So here, to measure the temperature, we bought an infrared camera from um, FLIR. Uh, this here is a bunch of trap uh, camera specs. So one of the most important specs is here is the ac measurement accuracy, which is two degrees. This definitely is not as good as what we want. So we have to do the camera calibration by ourselves. So to do the um, camera calibration, we, we, we made this thermal block from aluminum. Uh, we painted the front surface of the thermal block using the black paint. And uh, we, we used the Peltier cooler to control the temperature, which is attached to the back surface of the thermal block. And uh, this uh, temperature, the real temperature of the thermal block is uh, monitored using the calibrated uh, thermistors. And uh, the whole, this, this package is, uh, is surrounded by this thermal isolation materials. So we put the camera in the front of the front surface of this thermal block and uh, do, we measure the temperature using this infra infrared camera. So here is some preliminary result. This is the thermal image of the center part of the front surface of this uh, thermal block. So this uh, black re uh, re this uh, red region in the thermal image corresponding to the black region in this uh, re in this uh, uh, in this picture of the thermal block. So we plotted the temperature distribution along the vertical and the horizontal lines through the center of this uh, image. As we can see, the temperature distribution is very uniform in this uh, painted region which tells us this pen, that by painting the surface using the uh, high emissivity paint uh, can increase the temperature measurement accuracy of uh, re reliability dramatically. So next, what we want to do is to compare the temperature measured by the infrared camera with the temperature measured by the thermistor. So here we plotted the, temperature, the difference of the temperature measured by the infrared camera and uh, the thermistor as a function of the temperature measured by the thermistor. This, the temperature measured by the thermistor, we treated as the real temperature of the thermal block. So we did a two types of measurement with or without the close up lens attached to the infrared camera. Uh, so for the measurement without the close up lens, the temperature measured by the infrared camera and the thermistor, they agree with each other very well. However, the when, when we use the closed up lens, uh, there is a linear shift of the temperature. Uh, we, we observe a linear shift or offset of the temperature when using the closed up lens. Uh, we believe this is because the use of this closed up lens. This is confirmed by inserting a zinc cylinder in the window in, in the between of the thermal block and the infrared camera. And, uh, the, this shift, the slope of the shift becomes larger. Uh, there are many uh, data sets plotted in this uh, graph, in this plot. Uh, different data set repre represents the different measurement uh, arrangement, like we put our thermal block and the camera in different locations of the lab, trying to figure out what's the influence or the effect of, of, from the environment. Turns out that's not very large. Um, so if we have this measurement, we can fit this measurement with a linear function, and uh, we treat this as a calibration of our uh, calib 
at the calibration of our infrared camera. By analyzing the rest of this linearly fit, we can get this measurement uncertainty, which is about 0.1 degree. So for the next step of the experiment, we, we come up with some better idea is to make a small thermal block and mount this small thermal block uh, to the support of our ion trap and put this package to the vacuum system. Uh, because here, you, as you will see later, so this thing will be replaced by, the, by our ion test ion trap. So again, we will paint the front surface of the thermal block to the black to increase the emissivity. We will use the calibrate the thermist to monitor the real temperature of the block. Uh, uh, the, we will put the infrared camera here outside of the vacuum to do the measurement through this zinc cylinder window. So hopefully by doing so, we will have the relation between the real temperature of the trap of the thermal block and the temperature measured by the infrared camera. So after we, after this, we want to replace that uh, thermal block with our iron, with our iron trap. Um, we will make some black paint point spot on the iron trap components, and we will do the temperature measurement using the infrared camera outside of the vacuum vacuum chamber. And uh, relying on the relationship of the temperature measured by the infrared camera and the real temperature, we will get the real temperature of the trap components. So this test uh, iron trap is currently under construction, almost uh, finished the construction work. So hopefully we can put this into the system in next uh, few weeks. So here, so in conclusions, uh, we set up the vacuum system and the infrared camera system to do the temperature measurement. And we, and we have some preliminary result for the infrared camera calibration. Uh, and we have the test trap currently under construction. So the future plans, so we want, we will do this in vacuum calibration of infrared camera, and uh, we will measure the, com the, the temperature uh, of the ion trap components, and also we, we need some theoretical analyze with, with the collaboration with the uh, Czech Metrology Institute. And uh, by doing all of this, hopefully we can uh, achieve the target of the black body radiation field uncertainty of our strontium ion clock to less than three times 10 to minus. 18. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.